Mother Rama Devi and V. Ganesan. In the 1960s, there was not much activity in Sri Ramana Ashramam. There were hardly any visitors. Added to this, as there were a number of court cases going on, the atmosphere of the ashram was one of pensive passivity. It looked almost deserted. The lady cooks, who were used to cooking enormous quantities of food in giant vessels during the lifetime of Sri Bhagavan, used to jokingly remark, When we were children, we used to play the father-mother game. Our parents encouraged us by buying toy vessels that were tiny replicas of all types of the large vessels used in cooking for a big family. The vessels now used in the ashram kitchen remind us of those toy vessels. One day after a couple of months, the apparently sleepy ashram suddenly woke up to jubilation and activity. The reason was that Mother Rama Devi was coming from Mangalore with her retinue exclusively to be at the ashram and pay homage to Sri Bhagavan at his Shrine of Grace. Balarama Red Ayer and Mrs. F. Teliyarkin, longtime devotees of Bhagavan, were actively involved in making arrangements for the mother's visit. On the appointed day, she arrived and was accommodated at the Santanur Project Guest House while her retinue of devotees were put up in the Morvi compound. The mother and her devotees were regularly visiting the ashram, but I was not very much interested. That day, while I was working at the ashram office, Munagala Venkatramaya, the author and compiler of talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi, came to me and said, you have read about Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa, right? One of the many things that were quite wondrous about that spiritual colossus was his bhava samadhi, his ability to go beyond body consciousness in ecstasy while remaining in a particular posture. All of us have only read or heard about it, but none of us have ever seen one absorbed in that ecstatic state. Mother Rama Devi also gets into genuine bhava samadhi effortlessly. I believe there is going to be a bhajan by her devotees today. I am told that the mother often goes into bhava samadhi during the course or at the end of the bhajan. Come, sit with me. I will explain things to you. I obeyed him. The bhajan was arranged in the open space in front of the ashram office, and there was quite a good crowd. According to the Arunachala Mahatma, a scripture about the greatness of Arunachala, when Mother Parvati was performing intense one-pointed penance at Arunachala to be reabsorbed with Lord Shiva, a demon named Mahasura violently disturbed her. The mother warned him not to hinder her tapas, her austerities. But the demon persisted. Then the mother assumed a fierce form, fought with the demon, and destroyed him. This great victory of the Divine Mother has been vividly described in the beautiful and popular Sanskrit hymn, the Mahasura Mardani Stotra. It is a long hymn of praises set in rhythmic tunes. The disciples of Mother Ramadevi started singing this hymn in chorus, and it was really inspiring to hear. When the verses describing the details of the battle between the Divine Mother and the demon were being sung, Mother Rama Devi, who was until then in deep meditation, got up with her eyes still closed and started dancing in perfect rhythm, 
her hands expressing the meaning of the verses through mudras, which is often how it's done in traditional classical dance, using much expression with the hands. As the singing reached a crescendo, Mother Ramadevi went into Bhava Samadhi. It was a divine sight, even for a novice like me. The mother stood for 15 minutes in a posture in which it would be impossible to maintain the body's balance, especially considering the generous heft of the mother, mother's body. The peculiar posture of triumphing over the demon with one leg up on the air, the arms swinging, and the body slanted fully to one side. Even a circus acrobat couldn't have remained in that strange posture for that long. The disciples now started singing a pacifying song in low, soothing tones, and the mother slowly came back to her normal state, all prostrated to her, Munagala urged me also to follow suit. I did it willingly and happily, for I was deeply affected by the divine fervor of Mother Ramadevi's Bhava Samadhi. Munagala explained to me the nuances of that special Samadhi state, which enhanced my understanding and inner joy of conscious participation. Without doubt, it was one of the greatest spiritual experiences in my life. The next day, Balarama read Ayer, an old devotee of Sri Bhagavan and an ashram resident, took me to his room and, taking me unawares, pleaded that I should go back to the world, take up a job, earn well, get married, and lead the life of a grihasta, a family man. I was shocked. Despite all my reverence for him, I flatly refused. He became very angry and told me that this was also the earnest wish of Nagu, my mother, and that I had to obey her. In the evening, my mother called me and confirmed what Red Ayar had told me that morning. I was totally nonplussed. Why this sudden plot to drive me away from my haven, the ashram? into the hell of worldly life. I made up my mind not to give in and never move out of the ashram. Within a few days, the news of Mother Ramadevi's presence at the ashram spread all over the town and beyond. Large crowds rushed to the guest house where she was staying to have darshan of her. Restrictions were imposed on the timings of her darshan. I didn't take notice of any of these activities as I was deeply hurt and disappointed, feeling that I had been unjustly let down by everyone. My mother's support to this plot intrigued me. How, she, how could she join hands in drowning me in the mire of worldly entanglements? Oh, my dear mother, you too, I thought. A day or so later, Dr. Gopala Krishnan, the able secretary of Mother Ramadevi approached me with the message that Mother wanted to see me at 2.30 in the afternoon. He was kind enough to add, Ganesan, you know, it is very rare that the Mother gives private interviews of her own accord. Hundreds of people long to have it, but are unable to. You are very fortunate that she herself has invited you. So don't miss this golden opportunity. It is a great boon bestowed on you. Despite my disturbed condition, thanks to my good fortune, I replied that I would definitely go and meet the mother. <laughs> 